Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's threat snapshot. So we're going to be focusing on everyone's favorite Microsoft application today, Word, and highlighting two recent threats. The first is going to be a vulnerability that was part of last month's Patch Tuesday. Uh, this is CVE 2023-21716. And when I saw it reserved, I knew this was going to be interesting because it's pretty rare that you see a remote code execution vulnerability on an Office product. So the details about this one is it is affecting the rich text format or RTF files, and it is a heap overflow in the font table. So basically what happens is you have an abnormal amount of fonts that are loaded into this rich text document, and it's going to, again, overflow the heap. So there is a POC available. That proof of concept is going to cause Word to crash. But um, again, if you've ever played CTFs, you know that you can groom the heap. You can uh, achieve remote code execution in some instances. It's a little bit more challenging than your stack-based buffer overflows. But uh, given enough details and time, a motivated attacker could potentially weaponize this. So best case of action is going to actually be to patch uh, Microsoft Office. Again, there is a patch available, but we want to take a look here a little bit more about the threat, take a look about some of the possible detections here. I'm going to give a shout out to Josh Drake. He is the original author of this POC. Um, you can follow him on Twitter at JDuck. He's got, um, again, this one line POC here, which is what we're going to take a look at in Snap Attack. And he also released the vulnerability disclosure that he sent to Microsoft, as well as some other things here. So if you're interested in this specific CVE, definitely take a look and follow him along. All right, so this heap corruption, what does this look like? Uh, so again, we launched it in Snap Attack in our threat platform, and uh, we have that malicious Word document that we created. Um, that rich text file with the, again, large number of uh, fonts in the font table. And uh, quite frankly, it's pretty boring. Uh, it opens up and it doesn't finish because there is a crash here. Um, so that is really what we have. We have, again, no remote code execution because this is just a crash. Uh, pivoting over to our process graph, we were hoping that there might be some interesting logs, some other things. You know, maybe Word is going to load a DLL that it normally doesn't use for the, the rich text file processing, or, you know, maybe there's some other interesting things. Um, in this case, we get uh, WER fault, which, again, could be symptomatic of any crash. Again, that's going to happen from any sort of tool that has, you know, this sort of crash. So it's not necessarily a, uh, you know, high quality, high fidelity detection. Um, it may detect this POC, but... Um, what we would expect to see, however, though, if we did have successful execution, again, looking at a lot of our, you know, existing threats around other, you know, office CVEs around, um, you know, macro enabled Word documents and things similar to web shells, looking a lot at that parent child relationship and what sort of things uh, Microsoft Word is doing. So uh, if you like a lot of organizations don't have, you know, the best patch management in place, it's hard to patch Word. You know, you have users on different versions and some that are, you know, unupdated. You can definitely deploy detections to your EDR, to your SIM to look for some of these suspicious behaviors. So, you know, one that's always talked about is, you know, office spawning suspicious or weird, you know, program applications. Uh, again, we can see, you know, you know, back last year with the Felina Office Zero Day, um, you know, where uh, WinWord was spawning MSDT with that, you know, kind of suspicious command line. Um, these sort of detections, a little bit more evergreen, certainly valuable. Again, another one is creating, um, you know, Office creating suspicious files here. Um, we'll actually show that uh, detection working live uh, for another threat here in a minute. Um, but looking and seeing when you have that, you know, macro enabled document or you have that threat, oftentimes it's going to write other files, you know, say like a DLL to a temporary directory. That might be the C2 and that stage two that's going to be executed. So looking to see where and what it's writing is interesting. Um, looking for unusual network connections from Microsoft Word. Um, again, that could be an indication of beaconing behavior out to a command and control uh, server, could be pulling down additional files or things to execute. Um, Microsoft spawning scripting interpreters, so WScript and CScript and PowerShell and, and other tools like that. Again, definitely something that is not common for Microsoft Word in your average Office document. So those are all things that are worth another look. And again, with Snap Attack, we make it very easy to deploy these to uh, a tool or integration of your choice with a single click. So I could deploy this to Sentinel-1 or CrowdStrike or Chronicle 
you know, very easily here. All right, let's continue talking about Microsoft Word. Um, this one is going to be in the lens of Emotet. Uh, so they have come back uh, after a three month hiatus. And uh, what we are seeing is evidence of a very large uh, office document. So um, we have again in Snap Attack the intelligence report, we have the threat, we have detections cataloged here. Uh, let's, let's dive right into it here. So um, this is the actual threat and one of the sources that we found. Um, again, I mentioned that this uh, Word document is an absolute unit. It is 500 megabytes. Why is it 500 megabytes, you ask? Is there a really big C2 payload in there? Uh, no, it turns out large files are often not scanned by antivirus. And if it's above 500 megabytes, they give up. Um, I think virus total, you can only upload like a 600 megabyte file to anyway. So you'll see a lot of applications. They'll just, again, fail to scan those or only scan the first part of those large files. So this is, again, an evasion technique that is uh, effective. Um, then we'll also see some other interesting living off the land techniques here. So they've got the VBA macro. They've got RegServe 32. They're using um, registry run keys and things here. And ultimately, this, uh, execu this execution flow is going to result in that Emotet uh, you know, DLL being loaded. So have a sample of this binary. We've taken a look at this in Snap Attack. Uh, this is a little bit longer threat, so I'm going to skip around here. So we have that absolute unit of a Word document. Um, 500 megabyte Word documents take a long time to load and get into memory. So we can see some stuff here where, again, you've got that kind of famous, uh, we'll call it a, a phishing or social engineering exercise of, you know, hey, this, this document is protected. I need you to click that enable content button to see that content here. Uh, we can see really quickly there that there is a zip file that was dropped to the desktop. It is being extracted. Um, again, not super stealthy here, and it's going to do some additional stuff here. So we're going to see um, some DLL time stomping. So they're going to try and blend in. There's other stuff going on in the background here. We can see uh, RegServe loading a, a file from the temporary directory. We can see some creation here. Ultimately, not a lot changes in here. It doesn't open up and provide another document that you would expect, um, again, making you think that there was something legitimate here. Uh, takes a little bit of time to run, but there is, again, that Emotet DLL that's being launched here. Um, so we do have a, a pretty interesting timeline, again, because they are using a lot of those living off the land techniques, you know, these sort of behaviors. Uh, they light up on a process graph, again, looking at those, you know, rare suspicious parent-child relationships. Uh, it's not every day that you see Microsoft Office, you know, dropping a zip file to the desktop and using RegServe32 uh, and other DLLs to, you know, launch these sort of attacks. So, you know, we can see these sort of chains here. Uh, again, this is something that is, you know, abnormal. This is interesting. And, you know, this is definitely very much uh, in the detection opportunity. So. You know, even when there's new threats like Emotet and they are using techniques like this, there are, again, some more generic behavioral detections that would have prevented and, you know, alerted you to this sort of behavior if they were deployed ahead of time in your network. Um, I mean, you can see this one's going back to October and, you know, we're talking about a threat that was just released earlier this week. So unsigned DLLs um, that are being loaded from run DLL 32, RegServe 32, again, in non-standard directories. So if they're looking at, you know, temp directory or desktop or other things, we have lots of evidence of tools. Um, these are some of, you know, our sessions. We've got Atomic Red Team. We've got Mandiant Security Validation, Google Ads Malvertising. Um, lots of different things are using, you know, this sort of technique. So a behavior like this is effective. And again, we have other versions of this detection. So uh, RegServe32 creating suspicious files or other anomalous behaviors with RegServe32. So these are all possible detections and looking at what RegServe32 is doing is definitely an interesting topic. Another thing is um, Office uh, applications creating files. Again, it was rare when we were talking about, um, you know, that last, uh, you know, threat with the CVE, if they were going to drop like a C2 or second stage. Um, you know, this is another example here. Again, we've seen Muddy Water. We've seen, you know, other applications do that. So that file piece is definitely interesting. Um, specifically to this threat, um, some, you know, more recent detections that we created. Um, again, if you have an NDR, if you have, you know, network observability, 
um, taking a look at some of those indicators. So again, they have some you know very specific user agent strings here. You know, downloading the zip file, having you know Microsoft Office doing that is anomalous. So there is an opportunity to look for things like that. Um, and again, it's it is like I mentioned, very rare that you're going to see you know Office applications uh, spawning zip files. So we can see here from that Emotet campaign here that WinWord was spawning that zip file, especially to the desktop. So again, those anomalous behaviors, maybe this isn't going to fire an uh, alert and send somebody off right away, but you know, in aggregation, if you have enough of these sort of behaviors chained together where I've got this abnormal zip file and I've got, you know, RegServe32 and some other weird things popping on this, this user's host, um, those definitely can bubble up into more of a notable event, a notable alert, and you can you know take action on those. So, again, with Snap Attack, we make those very easy to integrate with your tool. You know, with one click, I can deploy this to a SIM or an EDR. Going to deploy this to my Sentinel One demo account, and then we are going to be protected from a threat like this. So, we make it easy for you to stay ahead of threats. So that's our snapshot for this week. It's a weekly series. Be sure to follow us, comment below the video, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.